Hi there, I'm Rich from Solinary and I'm here today to talk to you about the Algo Laser Alpha Laser Engraver. Or can I say laser engraver and laser cutter because it does both. I'm totally new to the idea of laser engraving, okay? I'm a woodworker. I've been doing woodworking for 50 years. Laser engravers came along, I was curious about them. You might ask, why would a woodworker be interested in using a laser engraver? There's things I thought I could do with it that I can't do with other means. We're starting to see more and more people that are doing customized woodworking projects like uh, personalized things where somebody they might engrave somebody's name into say a cutting board or something like that but what I was interested in more than anything was the idea of engraving glass and uh, I was surprised with that ability it also works with a variety of materials uh, plastics metal wood so you can engrave a lot of different types of material and incorporate that into the woodworking is this going to replace anything I'm currently doing no it's hopefully going to enhance some of the things I'm doing, and that's what I'm excited about. I've got my algo laser set up here, ready to do a project. I've hooked it up to a laptop because I'm using the Lightburn software to run the laser engraver. There's not much else I've got to do. I've got a design here. It's three elements. It's a compass rose, a couple words, and a cutout frame. And those are on three separate layers, which allows me to set the image as an image, and it's just going to do exactly what's shown there. The lettering, which is just outlined here, will be filled and then this red line on the outside will be cut out, okay? The only thing I've got left to do is set the height of the laser. This is a, a necessary adjustment because this sets the focal length. So we're setting the actual focal length of the laser so that it'll be a sharp image, okay? And it's ready to go. According to the program here, it's gonna take 21 minutes for us to make this design. Now what you're hearing is the air pump here, which is providing a steady stream of air to the laser to brush off, and to cool the laser, and that's a constant thing. And it's controlled automatically by the software through this controller. And that's all you gotta do, it's ready to go. So here's our finished piece. It's uh, obvious that I had the laser set a little too high. I'm still learning this, and getting the settings dialed in just right takes a little bit of practice. I hadn't actually used this particular type of plywood for with this laser engraver yet, so that's probably why it's a little high. What I was using was a little thicker, required a little higher setting. So it takes some practice, but it's extremely easy to work with and the results are stunning. The parts are extremely well designed. They're all extremely aluminum. They fit together beautifully. There was no alignment problems, no difficulty of putting everything, anything together. It's all put together with hex insert head screws and they give you the Allen wrenches for that. Very easy to assemble. I think the most complex thing I had to put in here was a shaft which had flexible couplings at both ends. A few connectors to connect, electrical connectors, connect the air hose from the pump. That's about it. The height of the, the laser module here is adjusted and it's got a little gauge here for setting it and I just found out that they make a set of risers that you can attach underneath this to raise it up even higher. The belts are pre-installed when it comes so you don't have to mess with the belts. All you have to do is tension the belts and that's really easy. It's just an Allen screw. Tighten it up until it runs smoothly. The hardest thing I had trouble with was the software. The software doesn't belong to the people that make this. Okay, It's a third-party software that is used with it. It was learning the software. When I got it all hooked up properly, the software instantly recognized the laser engraver and put in the necessary drivers and it was ready to go. So that's not so much a problem as just my limitations in that I'm new to using laser engravers. Being new to it is learning the settings, you know, depending on the type of material and the th material thickness and how dark or how deep an engraving I want, it affects what the settings are and that's operated through the software. And this was my first shot at engraving glass and it came out absolutely stunning. I'm looking forward to using this because I make some cabinetry with glass fronted doors. Okay, I don't know if you've seen the old homes that are say about a century old, maybe 80 years old. My house is about 80 some years old and a lot of the kitchen cabinets will have, the upper cabinets will have glass doors. Well, I like doing cabinetry with glass doors and this will give me the capability of engraving those glass doors. Just taking that to a whole nother level. As I mentioned, the, the cutting area is 400 millimeter square. That's a nice sized area. I also just found there's an expansion kit where you can double the size, okay? I don't know what I'd ever need that for because I could do my glass doors in segments, 
but there again, it's a possibility. The machine comes with some rather advanced software. It's, it's got a motherboard, it's got a dual core processor in there, and it's all pretty much self-contained in its own controls and the ability to do everything. But they call it a second generation COS technology, which gives a 40% smaller spot size, or we could say a pixel size. And what that does is allow for very fine work. I took a photograph I had here and uh, I engraved the photograph. This is my grandkids from last Christmas. Import the photograph into the software and let it go. And it came out nice and clear. Okay, so that was something I did, you know, trying to learn what this thing will do for me. It has the capability of up to 500 shades of color. Now, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Engraving speed is very quick. Apparently, one of the things that they've been able to do as they've increased the technology is speed them up considerably. You can get up to 400 millimeters per second of engraving speed on this, which works out to like seven and a half times the actual performance speed. Speed is important, especially when you're trying to do a bunch of things, like if you're doing production work, say you want to make things that you're going to take to a craft fair or something like that, or if you're trying to do larger work. Larger work can be time consuming. It comes with the air pump and it's a smart air pump. Literally all you do is plug it in and forget about it. The pump automatically adjusts the airflow to the cutting speed and intensity that you're using the laser at. Even though it's a 22 watt laser, you don't necessarily have to use it at 22 watts. You can use a lower setting. And for some materials that may be necessary. Uh, when I was doing the glass, I was doing that, if I remember correctly, at 60% of capacity, okay? I've done some soft woods where I was down around 30% of capacity. So it really depends on the material you're working with. But the pump automatically adjusts. So you just plug it in. It's controlled off of the motherboard in the laser engraver. It supplies a constant supply of air to a nozzle that's right around the laser itself, cooling the nozzle, brushing away debris, and keeping things running smoothly. And it's automatic. You don't have to mess with it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to set it. I like that. Granted, they come in all sorts of different wattages, but the ones I've looked at before were much lower. And one of the things that held me back from buying one is that the laser just wasn't powerful enough to do a decent job. I wanted something that I could get a nice burn. This is our, our logo, and I was able to get a nice dark, color on this. Some other things I'd done before, the very first pieces I did on this laser engraver, they weren't as dark, but I was learning how to set it, okay? So I got a nice clean burn on that. It actually went, this is on thin plywood, and I could feel the ridge. I'm in about a 32nd of an inch here. This one will go up to 30 millimeters in pine in one pass. So you got a, a pine board, 30 millimeters, we're talking about an inch and a quarter roughly. You can cut that in one pass. You can go through 10 millimeters of black acrylic in one pass. You can go through a 0.1 millimeter stainless steel plate in one pass. <laughs> That's some pretty good cutting power. That's what that 22 watts does for you. If you go multiple passes, you can do much more. 10 millimeters of black acrylic can go up to about 45 millimeters of black acrylic. We're getting close to two inches there if you're going willing to go multiple passes. If you're gonna go 12 MDF, it'll do it. If you wanna do 20 millimeter oak, it, thick oak, it'll do it. It'll take multiple passes, but it'll still be able to do it. The machine comes with some sample pieces here, a little bit of, of plywood. I think that's birch plywood. Don't quote me on that. Um, a piece of black acrylic and a few pieces of stainless steel uh, that are colored black. I'm not sure what kind of paint material they're using there to test it out with. I haven't used those yet. I used other materials I had, predominantly plywood, but like this piece here is done on aluminum. I painted the aluminum. Interesting thing I learned about these laser engravers, and I learned this both with this aluminum and with the glass, is that if you're trying to engrave on something that's reflective or something that's transparent, you get nowhere because the light has to hit something and be converted into heat. Okay, that works really easily on wood, but glass, the light passes right through it. Aluminum will reflect the light, so you have to paint the aluminum black. So, you know, some of these things you learn as you go, and for me, this has very much been a learning experience, but it's been an enjoyable learning experience. Focus is, they call it semi-automatic. I think it's pretty much automatic. All you have to do to set the focus, let's say we're gonna work on this piece of wood right here, is loosen the lock so you can move the module up and down. And there's a bar here that drops down. You bring it down, lock it in place, and there's a button that retracts that bar out of the way and it's set, it's focused. For software, apparently it's designed to work with either laser GRBL or light burn. I've been using light burn. It's a, like I said, it's taken, there's been a learning curve there, learning how to use light burn because I've never worked with it, although I've worked with other graphics programs. I want to mention to you that right now, the Agolite Laser Alpha, this same model, 
is on the Gearberry platform at a promotional price of $749. That's considerably down from the regular price of $1,099. So if you're thinking about getting something like this, this is a really good time to do it and it's a really good price. You're not going to find another 22 watt laser engraver that's got 400 millimeters of capacity at that kind of price. If it's something that's on the horizon for you, now's a really good time to do it.